Okay, we're going to start this all over again. This is a charcoal grill that we found out in the woods when we moved here. Uh, I mounted a rocket stove in the bottom of it. And this tool on this a quarter inch plate I had when I had hooked on the bottom of it, on the top of it rather. And I had this, this is directly over the top of the rocket stove uh, for uh, making uh, coffee water, uh, boiling soup, making noodles, whatever you want. Put a, a quart can of water on top of it and boiled it for about 12 minutes so it gets really hot. Put just a little bit of vegetable oil on it and coat it. I do that when I'm trying to cook with a piece so it doesn't rust. Down here is some of the firewood and some of the uh, green wood that we use for, for cooking. this up for cleaning the ashes out. That's the firewood on top and the air goes in the bottom. That's one of the specialty tools I made up. And of course this one, which you saw, is for lifting the griddle top off. That's for the oil runoff, which I catch in this little can. And there's a, if you want to close it, you can adjust the heat by opening and closing that. And that's all for right now until we get ready to start it up. Oh, yes. I always start this up with a little bit of cotton that I saturate with Vaseline. It burns a long time and gets it going really well, quick. Okay, thank you very much for watching. We'll be back in a couple minutes with the, uh, with the food and get it going. Bye. Okay, we're getting ready to start up. I'm getting ready to start the grill up first. so it can breathe to start with. And once it gets going, we can put it right back again. Open up the thing here. We've got cotton on my little stick to push it with. It's easier to push it with a, a paper towel because the cotton, the gasoline on the cotton has a tendency to want to stick to the stick and pull back and everything. So, start it up. Take the towel and move it too. take too long to get going up the temperature when I can put the, the griddle cover back on again. You are going to get some smoke when you first start it up. Oh, you have to take this off. You are going to get some smoke when you first start it up because it's not hot enough. Once it gets hot enough, it actually reignites the smoke. So you get a clean burn once it gets hot enough. Can you hear it 
popping. Yep, she's starting to go. Smoke's starting to clean up a little bit. Problem with any rocket stove is you get a little bit of fly ash with it. That's just little little pieces here. I'll wipe them off the paper towel before we start to cook. Once I put the lid on, we won't get any more fly ash. But until we do, until we get that lid on there, we will get some fly ash. Starts very easily. Uh, you want to see how this was made? Uh, there's a whole series I did starting from one when this was just a rusty hulk, all the way up to putting the, the rocket stove in the bottom of it, reinforcing the frame, which of course came with it. And uh, we've cooked on it five or six times now. Uh, the, the series is all the way from one to six. It was a long drawn out process, but I really think it was worth it. I love it the way it is. Okay, looks like our smoke is pretty much gone. Incidentally, this wasn't my idea. I copied that off my wood cooking stove, an old wood cooking stove she's got. And it worked for her and it works for me. Uh, like I said, I put a quart can of water on there and it boiled within about 12 minutes. It was at a hard boil, so it does a good job. I'll give it a couple more minutes and then I'll give it the, the test and see how hard it is. It's starting to get hot now because we're getting some raindrops and raindrops are evaporating. Notice we're getting very little smoke now. Let's up the temperature. Got the coals the vent back down again. Oh, she's breathing real good. so it sears them on all the sides and it keeps the juice in. Look 
Okay, save some time. I want you to just heat up. I'm going to shut the camera off for a couple minutes, then we'll turn it back on again. Be back with you in a couple minutes. Okay, we're back with you. temperature is 145 Fahrenheit. Right now we're at 130 Fahrenheit, so it's getting to where we need to be. It's been about five minutes since I shut you off the last time. So we'll just sit here and watch for a little while. I don't know whether you can see it. I think maybe you can read that. That's inserted into the inside of the the thickest piece of meat. It's going up pretty quick. It's 135 now. 136. It's climbing pretty quick. Takes that thing a little while to get going because you have to remember that is a quarter inch thick piece of steel that I put on the top of that for grilling surface. So, as I said before, if you want to see how this thing was made, uh, go check my page out. Uh, it's char grill, one through six. Uh, it took six parts to do it. Uh, those of you who stuck with me and, and looked through it, that's fine. You can actually see us uh, cooking more than the one egg that I broke on it when I was test firing. Okay, let's just sit there. We're up to 147 now. Uh-oh. 148. We're past cooking temperature. I think that's where we need to be.